Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm a little worried about my computer, and I uh, I had a, a video that'll come up a little later in the uh, in the slideshow. Um, while I was preparing for this talk on creative problem creating, I was having a lot of problems with the computer, um, and it was doing things that I hadn't seen before at all. Uh, pretty amazing things. So we'll we'll look for that in a, in a minute. Um, uh, so yeah, my name is John Satram. I run a small uh, web and video company called Studio Thread, where we fix problems uh, for for our clients. I just want to put that out there. Um, <laughs> but I'm also uh, a dirty new media artist who likes to create problems. I I make videos. I do uh, web art. I create artware. I perform uh, with my desktop, and I organize uh, events where other weirdos like myself can congregate and do that stuff together. My uh, approach is a, it's a hack, hacky approach. It's a, it's a kludged approach. And a kludge is like an inelegant solution to a problem, right? Um, but a lot of people use the term glitch artist. Uh, I've spent a lot of time kind of uh, developing uh, ways to uh, bend data or open uh, files in the wrong programs or, or corrupt assets. The kind of problems that I want to talk about uh, are um, <laughs> are glitches. Uh, and we all know glitches, right? We're all familiar with glitches. And oh, by the way, why are there so many pictures of people on the internet biting their computers? If you do a search, you'll find, you know, a, like, a, a, well, pages. Um, but we've all been affected by glitches, right? We've all, we all can relate to a glitch. We've had our fair share today, I'm sure. Um, an example, one, uh, you know, they can be large, they can be small, right? An example of a large one, right, is the, the flash crash that happened in 2010. I don't know if folks remember this, when all of the algorithms that are kind of uh, uh, in control of the uh, sh uh, sharing futures on the stock market, they started to uh, cascade and trigger, and for a, a brief moment, uh, the, the bottom fell out, and they had to actually pause time so that they could uh, give the algorithms a rest. And so that moment, that, that glitch, right, uh, showed us that it's no longer uh, people in weird vests yelling at TVs that are doing the stock market, right? It's these algorithms, right? And that's, that's an example of maybe like a larger, a larger glitch. And then like, you know, a smaller, more personal flash crash may be the one that happens in your browser. Um, but that stu still uh, also um, shows us, you know, the technologies that are at play uh, behind, uh, you know, when we're simply browsing the web. So a glitch presents a moment where we're shocked out of a flow, right? So another example that I use is like if we're watching TV or something at home, right? And uh, we see that we all, we all went out and got new TVs a few years ago, right? Because we had to. Um, and I think the best feature of all these TVs is they do that great face smear, you know? Everybody knows what I'm talking about, I think. Um, but when that happens, like it's happening to Beyonce here, um, when that happens, we're broken out of the context of consuming the media that we were just sitting there and, and watching, right? We're, we're immediately struck with, is my TV okay? You know, is, is there something wrong with the file? Should I be downloading this program? Uh, you know, uh, should I uh, check the wires that are going out to the alley? Is there like a rodent chewing on it or something? <laughs> or like, you know, did I pay my cable bill? So all of a sudden you're, you're in, in this situation of, of considering the entire system Right? And I think that's, uh, that's what's really exciting about glitches. Um, as much as they cause alarm, uh, for, for me and for other folks, for other glitch artists, right, we, we kind of elate in that, in that moment, and that moment of, of switching perception. So when I see these moments, I pause, and I usually try to, uh, you know, get out my camera or, or get my phone and, uh, and try to capture them. Um, they show us, after all, that systems we rely on and praise for their perfection are inherently unstable and messy, maybe kind of like how we are on the inside. Here's just a couple from a, a group online. There's a, two groups. There's one on Flickr and there's one on Vimeo of folks that capture glitches. Uh, it's called Glitch Safari. So I feel like I'm constantly on Glitch Safari. Um, this is like an analog glitch, right? Maybe the wind came. <laughs> it's kind of. So, you know, uh, what other people might just think are uh, flashing squares and, and, and garble, uh, you know, I take a moment and kind of, kind of pause to look at that. So, um, but speaking of uh, flashing squares and garble, I, I want to share a little bit of my work, and I've kind of ex excerpted a few, uh, a few things uh, that I'd like to share.
So, so Colablox was made from, uh, from files, uh, from files that I was collecting from public computer labs and, and then intentionally corrupting and zooming into to kind of show some of the artifacts that were coming out of the, the file. The cool thing is that, you know, when you're glitching or corrupting data, you, you get to see little bits of the files come out. They're, maybe they're personalities or something. Um, you know, a, a JPEG breaks down different than a, than a PNG, right? Um, so anyway, uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, Ben Syverson, who's here uh, in the audience. Hey, Ben. Where are you? Thanks for coming. I uh, uh, <laughs> uh, saw that piece uh, and um, uh, decided to, to make an After Effects uh, plugin uh, that um, then anyone could load up this plugin and, and make work like my work, uh, which was really cool. I loved it. It was really, you know, it was really handy. Um, but it doesn't work today. It's obsolete. Uh, because uh, you know, uh, Mac OS went from OS 9 to OS 10, and the exploit that Ben was taking advantage of of, of corrupting the video memory uh, of the computer, uh, they they changed all that stuff. So um, you'll see that that kind of come up with folks that work in the way that I work. Uh, these these themes of uh, being excited about uh, progress, you know, uh, but also hesitant about updates, you know. Um, <laughs> There's, there's, it's like a dance between progress and malfunction, right? Because folks like me spend a lot of time doing weird things that we call art, and then they break when things get fixed. <laughs> right? We've maybe seen that before. Not a bug, it's a feature. Uh, so I, I also like to sample from this within the systems that I'm creating. Uh, folks have uh, described some of the work that I do as kind of a bricolage uh, approach and, and like bricolage is, is using uh, available materials, kind of like kind of like using a comb and some wax paper to make a, a kazoo or something, or like playing spoons on a Saturday night if like if your internet goes out or whatever. Um, <laughs> but like seriously, you know, th th we've got so many things on our computers, right? Uh, all this stuff is up for grabs. When you look at an application, like I've got he Word here, it's just a collection of, of assets. It's a collection of, window, of icons and, and pictures and sounds and scripts. It's all of this stuff that then comes together to be the experience of using a program, right? Um, and in my book, all of that's like fair game. So here's another excerpt from a piece uh, called ROM Zero. Information can also be added to automatically appear whenever you create a purchase order or enter a purchase for the vendor. Clicking an area on the navigation aid takes you to that window. So it's, it's featuring a lot of assets uh, in there that are, are both, you know, from weird computer searches uh, and, and, and kind of gathering piles of files that I'm corrupting. Uh, but also frames of the video uh, represented as icons of frames within the video. Modularity is one of the five principles of new media, said uh, Lev Manovich um, in the language of new media, uh, in addition to numer numerical representation, uh, automation, variability, and transcoding. Lately I've been
So you can see that kind of that kind of breaks down and creates this big moshy glitchy mess, um, and that's that's the linear experience of that piece, right? But uh, it also has downloadable assets that th these little these little guys that you can download um, and uh, you know, have on your own desktop potentially uh, recreating uh, a similar situation that I've recorded in the video, but it's also With the example of uh, the Satramizer, right, um, and it could be considered a transmedia example. Uh, after the After Effects plugin was created, Ben and I uh, and became obsolete. Ben and I worked on a, a shell script that we could uh, uh, corrupt files with, and then Ben added multi-touch to that. So now you can uh, download the Satramizer for your iPhone and uh, glitch it, glitch pictures with your fingers, corrupt the data under your fingers. Um, and in 2010, it After we released the Satramizer in 2008, the world's first multi-touch glitch application that fits in users' pockets, we decided to take it one step further. We started thinking about what Satramizer can do for people. We've taken the revolutionary power of Satramizer and actually made it even more revolutionary because now it's just the foundation of a brand new operating system. We call it SOS. This operating system's a lot of fun. You can use it on the bus, you can use it on the train, you can use it when you're on your way to see your spouse or your loved one or uh, a friend, you know? A good friend. We don't even need to know about it. Once you open yourself up to the possibilities of a 100% problem-based operating system, you really start to see that anything is possible. This is an operating system that we've really designed for you to use. So, the Satramizer uh, 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 OS uh, was created in 2010 for a, a show in Eindhoven, Netherlands called Funware. Um, and uh, we, our user base uh, came out pretty strong. Um, uh, you'll see in this, in this uh, diagram, um, it doesn't have other operating systems listed because those at the time were being measured in tens of millions. Um, and this is being, this is being measured in tens, well, ones. So like, you'll see now, uh, you know, just because like Ben and I are just two guys and we've um, potential legal issues of releasing this, you know, uh, in the wild. Um, uh, you'll see it's kind of gone down to two, and I think I think Ben owns both of those iPads. Um, but we're about to release a, a couple new things, so stay tuned uh, with that project. Um, so, oh, this is, the, this is the stuff of my computer. Yesterday, when I was going over uh, the notes for this, I, I, I've never, never seen it act like that. Um, but I want to say that, that creative problem creating is nothing new. Artists have been problematizing systems throughout history, um, pointing out the limitations, challenging assumptions, and defining the edges is what art does. A great example, actually, is the, the show upstairs, the, the destroy the, the picture show. Um, but it's, a, it's an interesting time to be working in these areas as streams are solidified and wa uh, walled gardens are being erected and the rate of obsolescence speeds up. I've been inspired by the folks that come before me and have had uh, the opportunity to, to teach and collaborate with some amazing artists here in Chicago and around the world. Uh, glitch art is reacting to our contemporary condition, which is dirty, digital, and inherently glitchy. Glitches present an opportunity to problematize one's current context. Or the definition that I use over at the School of the Art Institute where I teach a glitch art class is that a glitch is a moment in time that breaks us from a predetermined flow and makes us aware of, or at least consider, the systems at play. 
We're increase increasingly relying upon complex digital systems from browsing online to drone warfare. And often these systems are specifically designed to make us forget about them. Glitches have the potential to break us from the systems and provide a window to peer through or a cliff to peer off or a fork in the road. So uh, the next time that a glitch happens in your world, I invite you to uh, take a moment and just kind of step back. Thanks.